that we all know what he's all about, right? Yeah. He was a what, everyone? A astronaut. Astronaut. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to hear about his story. So I'm going to turn it over to Uncle Curtis Brown. Thank you. Let's give him a warm welcome. How's everyone doing? Good? Good? I have to say this is the best class of students I've ever seen. I've never seen someone so quiet and so organized and so patient for me to show up. Because they made me eat lunch before I came, okay? So that's why I'm a little late, I guess. But everyone's doing good. Well, I did, um, I'm an astronaut. I think once you're an astronaut, you always are an astronaut. So I am an astronaut, and I flew in the space six different times, six different times. Um, I flew the space shuttle. Does everybody know what the space shuttle is? Yes! It doesn't fly anymore. They retired it, and they have it in museums. So some of the museums you can go see, you can actually go see the shuttle, the real shuttle. It's a museum, one down at the Kennedy Space Center, one in Washington, D.C., and one out in L.A. But, I used to fly the space shuttle. A big question here, does anyone know who John Glenn is? No. Yes. Someone know, anybody know, raise your hand. You know who John Glenn is? Anybody know who John Glenn is? Okay, it's a tough question, go ahead. He's like, uh, he's, he's the boss, but he's still a he is the boss, kind of. He was the first. <laughs> he was the first American to orbit the Earth at the beginning of the space rover, way back in like 1962. I know that's like way before you guys ever thought about anything, but 1962, he orbited the Earth, and I got to take him up in space a few years ago, and, and he was 77 years old. 77. And he did a really good job. Does anybody know about Mars? You know, Mars is a planet. Ah, you guys are so smart. And we're going to go to Mars one of these days, okay? And guess how old the people going to Mars are going to be? They're going to be about in their mid-30s. 30 years old or so. And how old are you guys?
about maybe 55 or maybe 60 miles per hour. Oh, or some dad go, he says my dad goes really fast. <laughs> but he doesn't, he doesn't go 18,000 miles an hour, so we have to use a rocket. Yes, ma'am. You got a question? <laughs> How we can breathe in space? Well, actually, inside the space shuttle, we have the same oxygen and air that we have right here. We mix nitrogen primarily and, and oxygen primarily. That's what kind of makes up the air that you're breathing. And then if they go outside and do a spacewalk, you know the suit they wear? They wear a space suit? The inside the space suit, they, they have 100%, it's all oxygen inside the space suit. So they can breathe just oxygen, okay? So that's how we do that. Over here, you got a question? That's right, my last flight was in 1999. It was actually in December of 1999, right before Christmas. And we were, up, we were actually up in orbit over Christmas. And then we had this here. And that was that was on the hatch. And we looked outside and guess who was there? Santa Claus was there. Yeah. He came to see us in orbit. Another question over here. Yes, ma'am. You have a question? I'm sorry, I'm good here. Uh, 
I wish that I could take every one of you and all your teachers and your parents and take them to space and let them look at the earth because it is unbelievable. It's not like a movie. You, you know, you've been to movies where you see the planet or you've seen a video game with the planet. But imagine if you look out the window and you saw this big, beautiful blue planet called Earth, which is your home. You can't see any borders. You can see the oceans. You can see the land mass. And I don't know how they did it, but you know, we've had maps from many, many, many hundreds of years ago. And like Florida, the peninsula of Florida and the Great Lakes, all that looked exactly like the map, like you were looking at a globe out the window. So it's really beautiful, really good question. I wish I could take you up. Yes. How did it feel when you first started floating in the air? Oh, another great question. And that's one of the best things about space is floating. How does it feel floating? Everyone's been in a lake or a like white lake or a pond or a, a pool or something, right? Swimming? Okay. The best way to know what it feels like in space is kind of, and with your parents' permission, okay? I don't want anyone to drown. So, but like, close your eyes and just float out in the water without touching the bottom or anything. Just close your eyes and float. And don't move, just sit there and float. And that's what it feels like to float in space. Except you don't get cold and your hands don't wrinkle up from being in the water and you can't feel the water, okay? And you don't have to hold your breath. So it's really, really neat just floating around. That's the neatest thing. You can fly, you can fly like Superman or Superwoman, you know, you just fly. It's really great. Yes. Why did you decide to go to space? Well, God, you guys got great questions. Why? Well, when I was your age, I decided that I wanted to fly. And I'm being in all serious. I really, I, my whole life, I just wanted to fly, fly an airplane. So I went to the Air Force Academy, like it shows over here. And after I graduated from the Air Force Academy, I went into the Air Force and flew airplanes. And then after that, I go, what can I do to challenge myself? Well, then I went to test pilot school to be a test pilot where you test airplanes. Airplanes where other people haven't flown them, and you'll be the first one to do stuff and test them. And so I did that for a while. And then well, I go, what is the next best thing that I could do to challenge myself? And so I applied to NASA to be a space shuttle astronaut, and I got picked. So that's kind of how I got into space. When I was your age, I didn't want to, I wasn't really thinking about space. I wanted just to fly. But then later on, I said, you know, the best flying in the world could be outer space. So here we are. Okay, guys, if you had a question that you came up with yesterday and you, you thought it out and kind of written down, we only have time for a few more questions. So if you are one of those people that have one of those questions, put your hands up. Everybody else, maybe we can take a few more in a few minutes. Okay. okay, I'll make my question, my answer short here. How about over here? Yes, ma'am. Um, how long were you an astronaut? How long? I, I got selected to be an astronaut in August of 1987, and I retired from being an astronaut in May of 2000, so about 14 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, um, how does it feel like taking off because Do you like this directly up? We do, yeah. No, on lift off, launch, the vehicle is standing up on its tail because it's a rocket, so it goes up like you see in your photos there, okay? And so we're laying with our, our, our knees are up here and we're laying on our back with our feet up like if you were sitting in this chair and you took this chair and made it just like that. Your back is on the floor and your feet are up. That's how, that's how you're sitting for launch. <laughs> Yep. And it's, everybody like roller coasters? Anybody been on roller coasters? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Launching in the space shuttle is the best roller coaster you could ever have. It's awesome. So I'll leave it at that. Yes. How does it look? How does it eat? Well, it's kind of funny. Everybody, you know, when you're in space, you're weightless, right? Everything floats. Yeah. So if you had, I say, like an M&M, and you had it here and you released it, it just float around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to be careful when you're eating. All our food up there is either rehydrated, meaning we put water back in it to, to get it wet again, and we eat it, or it can be something that's packaged, like camping food that you can eat right away. And we eat it with a, a spoon or a fork, believe that, believe it or not. We eat it with a spoon or a fork. So we open the pouch, and we take our spoon or fork, and we dip in, and we bring it out nice and slow, and we put it in our mouth. That's all good. Okay, but if you take it and bring it out 
and shake it, guess what happens? It just goes well, everywhere, okay? And then the rest of your crew members on your flight hate you, okay? <laughs> so the worst thing in space, this is the worst thing in space, is you're, you're doing your work, your experiment, or whatever, and all of a sudden you're inhaling and something goes up your nose. <laughs> and you go, what was that? You have no idea. And so then, you know, because but, but, everything floats, so if you lose your food, or anything, it will be floating around and you can wind up breathing it or eating it without wanting to. So you have to be very careful eating. But the food up in space is really good. It's not like it was in the early days. So many hands, so many questions. Yes, what are you ladies against the wall? What was your favorite mission? Uh, that's a great question. My, I had six missions. I have to say my most favorite was my first because it was my first. Um, but I think maybe my last one was my favorite because it was my last one. But then, does anybody know who John Glenn is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. John Glenn is the first American to orbit the Earth back in 1962. Well, on my next to last mission, my fifth mission, I got to take John up in orbit. He was 77 years old. And that was really, really neat because you kind of like get to fly with your childhood hero. And so that was really neat. That was really neat because if it hadn't been for John doing what he did in 1962, I couldn't do what I was doing in the 90s, so that was really, really neat. That made me feel good. Good question. Yes? Um, uh, what was your biggest challenge in space? Well, personally or the mission? Just the mission. The mission? Um, does anybody know what the Hubble Space Telescope is? I don't know. Okay. Yes. It's a big telescope that's really, really awesome that's up in orbit around the Earth. Well, my last mission, we went up and we rendezvoused with it, which means we took the shuttle up near it and docked with it, reached out and grabbed it with the arm and, and docked it into Payload Bay, and we did some servicing on it. And that was probably that was probably the most challenging mission I did because you didn't want to damage the telescope because it's a natural asset. There's only one of them, and if you didn't do your repairs and servicing right, it wouldn't work. So it was we had to make sure we did uh, did a good job. Yes. Would you encourage others to be astronauts? I would, only if you take me with you. <laughs> no, I, being an astronaut, um, it's not for everyone. And some people say that want to be an astronaut, they go, what should I study to be an astronaut? Well, no, seriously, that's a good question. What should, should you study airplanes? Should you study aerodynamics? Should you study physics or what? What do you need to study? when you get a little bit older, when you get out of kind of the, the standard courses that you're studying now, let's say when you get to college, you ought to study something that you really love studying. Because if you really love what you're studying, guess what? You'll do really, really good in it, right? And you have to do really good in it and be really good in it so that you stand out amongst the other folks that are in that same, same uh, subject. So just study something that you really love and you'll do a good job and then you'll, like I said with the other class, you guys are, uh, what, 11, 12? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually 30. I'm actually 30 years old, plus or minus a few years, okay? So I'll give you a few years, but literally. Um, so, you know who's going to Mars? If you think about it, to go to Mars, you're going to be in your mid 30s. Think about that. You're going to be in your mid 30s. That's who they're going to send to Mars. And so, you guys are 10, 12, and you have to finish school, so you got another. What? Years. Six years, seven years? <laughs> wow. Somewhere years. Over here? And then you have to go to college. And then you have a few more years after that, maybe doing some work experience and stuff. You guys are ones going to space. Someone your age is going to go to space. Or go to Mars, excuse me, in, in a few in fifteen years or so. Someone your age is going to go. And uh, I made a deal with the other class. If anybody in this class goes to Mars, since I came and talked to you today, you get to take me with you, okay? <laughs> everybody, everybody agree to that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, we only have time for like two more questions. So if you have a written question that you've worked on for the last couple of days, that should be the only ones with your Four. hands up. Okay? All right, so Henry. Henry? What is the coolest thing you saw in space? Um, coolest thing I've ever saw, well, Seeing your other class, your other astronauts floating around and doing funny games with their food, you know, and eating your food, 
floating around. It's kind of fun. But uh, looking out at your Earth is really neat. I mean, that is really, as I questioned earlier, really, really neat. And then working on the telescope and working on some of the satellites that we work on, they're actually out in space now. The Hubble Space Telescope is still there doing its job. And I worked on it in 1999, which was how many years ago? About no, 20 years ago. 19 or 20 years ago. And it's still out there working. So it's kind of neat to see that stuff. What's your question? Did I have a favorite baseball player? <laughs> no, I actually, I have to I have to think about that, a favorite baseball player. I, um, I have some favorite athletes, maybe not baseball, like Bart Starr. Do you know who Bart Starr is? He was a quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. Okay. So, but that was a few years before your time, so I, you know, you might not know who he is, but um, I have favorite astronauts like John Lynn because he, he did what I, I got to do later, and uh, and I got to meet Neil Armstrong, the man who walked on the moon, the first man to walk on the moon. I got to meet Neil Armstrong, and uh, and uh, he's a, he's just as like you guys. He's he's just a normal person. He just got the chance. Because he studied hard and worked hard, he got the chance to go be the first one on the moon. So, uh, how long did it take you to get your physical ability back to Oh, good question. How long, when you get back to Earth, does it take for you to get back to normal, kind of? Okay. Well, when you're up in space and you're floating around, you're not using your big muscles like in your legs or your back. You're just floating around. So, your body is way too smart. Your brain goes, well, if you're not going to use those muscles, I'm going to get rid of them. Or if you're not going to use those big skeletal bones like your leg bones or your back bone, and if you're not going to use them, then I'll just get rid of them. So your body actually starts the thing called decalcification. So you start losing bone mass. And they can actually measure it with a, with a um, x-ray or MRI. They can measure your bone loss. And also, when you get back and you try to walk around, you're weak. It's like you guys play sports, right? And you run really hard and you, let's say you play sports all day Saturday or something and that Saturday night you're just really tired. That's the way you feel like when you come back from space. Except if it lasts for a couple weeks or so. And then after that, um, you, you feel kind of back to normal. But a funny thing is, guess what? When you're up in space, your eyes are telling you one thing and your ear, your inner ear, you know about your inner ear? That's what keeps your balance. If, if I close my eyes now, I can still stand up because my inner ear is working. When you're up in space, your eyes are telling you one thing, your inner ear is telling you something different. So again, your brain is so smart, it turns your inner ear off. And it says, I believe the eyes. The eyes are dominant, they call it. So I believe my eyes. And guess what? When you get back on Earth, your inner ear is turned off, right? <laughs> because it's been off for the last two weeks or whatever. You get back on, work, back on Earth and you, and you start walking, and you don't even think about it where you're walking and you get ready to turn a corner to go down a hall and you do this number. Because <laughs> your inner ear says, wait a minute. I, you know, so you wind up going straight. It's hard to turn corners, believe it or not, because you just don't, you can't turn. But after a good night's sleep or so, then that all comes back and then you're able to walk again. It's pretty funny. We watch our friends that have never flown in space before. <coughs> Excuse me, and they fly you know, their first flight and they come back and go, hey, let's watch them. And they run into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. One last question, really quick. You have a question, Dr. Now? Okay. Um, I just remember when I was in the rocket ship launch off into space. Why does the back of the rocket ship launch off into space? The, uh, it comes along. Oh, oh, the, the, the boosters that come off? Is that what you mean? <clears throat> well, there, there was a very smart guy, a Von Braun, Von Braun, Braun, back in the day, that taught us how to use rockets to get to orbit, and it takes a lot of energy. So think about it. If you, um, I use a like a, a truck and a trailer. If you had to take a whole truck and a trailer full of stuff somewhere, it takes so much fuel, right? But let's say you put all your fuel for the trailer on the trailer, and then when you got going fast enough and you burn all that fuel, you just got rid of the trailer because you didn't need it anymore, and you just take your truck and keep going. So it takes less fuel because you're pulling less weight. So that's what happened on the shuttle. We launch with all the fuel, we get going so fast, and when the boosters burn out, we don't need them anymore, and they weigh a lot, so we get rid of them, they separate, 
And now we just have the shuttle going, and we burn the fuel within the shuttle. And then actually when we get to orbit, and we're in orbit, just coasting around, the engine shut down, the big external tank that's underneath the orbiter comes off, and it falls back into the atmosphere and burns up. And then we just have the shuttle doing our space stuff. So it's, it's kind of a <coughs> energy management thing that they use to, um, to get all of the mass that's going to get to orbit to orbit. That's a, a little deep question, but it's a good question because it, that's the reason we get rid of things on the way up. Okay, guys, can you say thank you? Thank, thank you. you! Now, you guys, this has to, have to be honest, okay? And I'm not making this up. You guys should be very, very proud of yourself. I go to a lot of schools and talk to a lot of students your age. You guys are the best group I've ever had. Seriously, you guys are quiet, you're polite, you respect each other's questions while people are talking. You guys are amazing, so thank you very much for it's being this way.